This is Twit. Well, the open source encryption program TrueCrypt was suddenly embroiled in mystery and confusion yesterday. Visitors to the TrueCrypt site were redirected to a page in the open source community site SourceForge, advising users to stop using the product and switch to Microsoft BitLocker. A warning at the top of the page said, quote, Using TrueCrypt is not secure as it may contain unfixed security issues. This page exists only to help migrate existing data encrypted by TrueCrypt, unquote. Wow. Steve Gibson is the founder of Gibson Research Corporation and a co-host of Twit's Security Now, and he joins us here to explain what the heck is going on. Welcome, Steve. Hey, glad to be with you guys. So glad you're here because I don't know what's going on here this is a very strange uh, turn of events the initial reaction to this event was that it's got to be a hack but this looks real doesn't it well yeah actually the the first you know the, the first thing anyone would would suspect is that somehow the you know the source forge account got hacked and this the whole thing was bogus that that the regular multi-page truecrypt site that's been there for years was replaced by a spoof the problem is that in addition to this posting saying that you sh that TrueCrypt is no longer secure, it sort of strangely mentions that Windows XP support is being discontinued as of this month, sort of inexplicably tying these two events together while there really is no connection between them. Um, but... It also posts a final version, 7.2. The previous last version from 2012 was version 7.1a. So there's this new one, 7.2, 7 and, and it's been altered so that all it will do is remove TrueCrypt from a system, essentially to aid people in migrating themselves away from TrueCrypt. But the censure is that it has been signed by the same authentic certificate, which was, well, first of all, the Windows version, the Windows signing certificate expired after the previous version was, was signed, but the replacement certificate, which predated the previous one's expiration, looks absolutely authentic. Same certificate authority, everything looks normal. No one would ever look at it twice. So it appears that this latest version, this replacement, is absolutely authentic from the people who had access to the previous one and the open source versions for Linux and Mac and so forth. They were The, the updated version was signed by the identical PGP signing key. So if this was a hack, it was an absolute breach of all of the previous security, which really is a stretch, yeah. which is leading those of us who've been looking at this to believe this was a takedown by the TrueCrypt developers deliberately. Which raises the question, who are the TrueCrypt developers? They're anonymous and they're volunteers. So we really don't know who they are at all. Does, I mean, do you have any information at all about who has been developing this software all this time? No, and in fact, even Matthew Green, who's the professor of cryptography at Johns Hopkins, who was leading the is truecryptaudited.com or is truecryptauditedyet.com website and the auditing effort, um, he immediately sent a note out to them through an obscure channel and sort of referred to, well, you know, they may, I'm not sure how soon they're going to get it. You know, their submarine doesn't surface that often. And he most recently posted that his last contact with them indicated they were happy with all of this. Uh, he, he tweeted, last I heard from TrueCrypt, quote, we are looking forward to results of phase two of your audit. Thank you very much for all your efforts again. So it looks like they were happy recently so yeah. i mean we really have a mystery you have uh you posit here that it may be coming from russia or china because windows xp is still a big deal there with more than 50 percent share do you think that's a clue well i we know we don't know where they are there was their organization certificate says nevada uh in the u.s which you know that seems arbitrary like why because las vegas is there who knows 
Um, because the tax but, laws are, are very friendly <laughs> for incorporation in Nevada. <laughs> um, well, and so, but what, you know, they're completely anonymous. Matthew believes they are not domestic. That is, they are not a U.S. group. He, for whatever reason, he, his, you know, the, the clues that he has sensed indicate that they're foreign. And, uh, you know, and this weird sort of oblique connection to the end of XP support where, where you know, they're saying that TrueCrypt is not secure because XP has expired, XP support has expired, but the two don't connect at all. I mean, TrueCrypt is multi-platform. It runs on on Windows Seven. The, the there there is a sort of a juncture here where we move from drives using the traditional, the so-called MBR, the Master Boot Record Partition type, to the GPT, the 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 GUID uh, partition type because the master boot record has an absolute maximum size of 2.2 terabytes, whereas the GPT is where we're going now because drives have gotten bigger than that. Well, that really requires some substantial re-engineering on the part of the TrueCrypt developers or whoever would pick up the open source project and carry it forward. And that just, it's not that they're unwilling to do that. It's, I mean, it's not a huge thing when you, you know, when viewed against the size of the overall TrueCrypt project. But it might have been sort of an inflection point where they just said, you know, uh, we've been doing this for a decade and we're not getting any money. And people get upset with us when we can't recover their drive because they didn't make a backup of their key um we're, we're we're done yeah and i just my take because i i've done two blog postings about this and my most recent one was just to sort of posit that you know maybe they're just done they, they've been doing this for 10 years and eh, now's a good time to say goodbye